Well, hello. I'm sure you saw my uh, previous video on this governor here, this 1963 Otis Type F governor. And in addition to this governor, I also got the selectors, which were being thrown away in my messy garage. And here they are. Three... 1963 Otis selectors from each of the three elevator cars that were in this 10-story building. Um, these were all removed as part of a modernization project that was going on in the building. Uh, they were all headed for the trash. There was no attempt going to be made to salvage any parts from them at all. They were just going to be sold as scrap are actually just thrown away as scrap and I went ahead and made the decision that it would be possible to um, take them and they said I could so here they are this is cutting edge technology for 1963 uh, I'm sure this is probably one of the only videos you're going to see of a selector of this type actually not in an elevator uh, service room somewhere because I'm sure not very many of these when they've been removed have been kept. These are probably the only three that have gotten this lucky treatment. So, and other than other than cleaning up some of the corrosion and putting a little bit of oil on some places because these did sit outside in the weather for about a month before I got them. Uh, they sit on the roof of a 10-story building because that's where the elevator penthouse was at uh, after their removal. Um, I've not done much to them. Basically, as I got them, as I brought them home. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few moving parts here, and I think I've got a pretty good understanding of how everything works, except for this... Um, mechanism here which is called the advance mechanism and I never really got a good view of how those worked when these things ran so uh, relying on an elevator mechanic friend there who will hopefully get me some paperwork to shed some light on the subject but let me do a quick demonstration of how how this works, at least to what my knowledge extends. This is what's called a selector. And the part that you're looking at right here with all these um, segments on it, uh, which I've heard referred to online as um, pie plates, uh, is the leveling shaft. And there's a plate at the bottom here that says car to selector ratio and it also gives a uh, car travel in feet per um, revolution of the leveling shaft and how this works is unlike modern elevator controls where there are um, sensors in the uh, hoist way attached to the car and attached to the um, uh, guide rails that the car rides on to tell the car where it's at this uses a, uh, a selector tape a thin metal um, band with uh, teeth holes cut in it that engages this wheel here uh, with some either pulleys at the top and bottom and as the elevator car moves the uh, perimeter face here of this wheel rotates at car speed and transfers that rotation to this shaft and through some gearing this chain here and causes this assembly to rise up and down with the car and this is how the um, elevator controls know where the car is at and uh, whether it's level or not uh, using these leveling cams here so anyway I don't have anything attached to these to keep them from just rotating on their own when um, you know 
I don't touch them, so they have a tendency to just rotate on down to the bottom. And as you can see here, this was a 10-story plus a basement building. So we've got the basement, the first floor, and then up to the 10th floor here. Um, now there is a little bit of wiring that I guess has broken loose and I've tried to tether that out of the way. Um, I'm not too worried about that right now. I, I intend to hopefully try to make some kind of display using one of these selectors and a governor uh, and some switches and a, and a motor and make a little um, display on a small trailer that I can take to the uh, steaming gas engine shows like the one at Pawnee because this is pretty old technology now and um, uh, definitely with the governor and all the moving gears in here, it would definitely be something um, that could make a bit of an attraction at one of those type of shows. Let me go ahead and rotate this up, and I'll try to explain how some of this works. Let me go ahead and run it up to the first floor. Now, before I go up too high, I want to explain that this whole assembly with these switches on it is designed to move up and down separately. There is a solenoid coil right there attached to it that um, as this thing is moving up and down, this is only for leveling. So there's no reason for those switches to be making contact with these um, segment plates unless the elevator is getting ready to stop. So as the elevator is moving normally, this whole assembly is designed to shift up. And it kind of jams up occasionally. I'll try to get on it. You can see it move up and down. And so what it would do is as the elevator is moving, if it's not going to be stopping at the next floor, um, this whole assembly will move up like that so that the switches aren't making contacts with the uh, pie plates. And actually, even just for moving one floor, uh, I think it will pop up. Anyway, I don't have that connected to anything, so you're not going to see it do that. But I just want you to know uh, that that's what it does. Okay, let's just go up to the first floor. All right, that should be that would be considered level right there. There's a series of switches here and uh, that causes the elevator to change speed as it approaches the floor. And so uh, if we were coming up to the first floor here, these would make contact and the car would slow down. It would continue to go up until these two drop out here like that and then it would be level if everything is adjusted right. You see that? And as it's coming down it would do the same thing. It would come around and then those two right there would drop out and it would be level. Now uh, there is a switch busted on this one uh, in fact, two of these three selectors each have a switch broken on them. That's why I've got three, because I've at least got enough parts to make two good selectors out of the three that I've got. Um, and that switch that's busted is the one... Um, point to it. This one right here. Uh, but the principle works the same still. As it goes up stop on the third floor right there should be level do that again 
right there. See those two drop off? They're on. They're dropping off. They're on. They drop off. Okay. And that's in the same position there where those two right there. So that pair back over there. They're on. They're off. They're on. They're off. For the elevator going down. And that pair right there. They're on. They're off. They're on. They're off. The car should be level in this area right here between the two. And I'm sure there's a you see there's a little bit of play there bef between between those picking up. I'm sure that was f to make up for the fact that, there, that the car probably had a, a little bit of momentum and would overshoot just a little bit past when that would stop. Now once again. I could be wrong. It could be that it that it runs and then but you know that'd be a long ways off either direction that way so I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, somebody with a little bit more knowledge than this other than me can uh, on this can chime in of course but the other thing uh, that's interesting to me though that I don't understand is this advanced mechanism and there's a motor here a 60 volt motor there's a series of cams and switches and a gear train that operates a um, uh, this mechanism over here with the switches on it and if we go over here we see there's these two shoes with a center point and the wiring here and then this uh, sprocket running on this stationary chain and um, what it appears to be is this uh, this whole thing here is attached such to where it it can slide this up and down separate from the rest of that moving and it operates the gears and those switches uh, since I'm almost out of time on this video here, let me try to do a demonstration of this. Let me run it in both directions there. Okay, watch. It will go down. This will remain stationary until it gets to a point. And then it will start rotating. And then it will start traveling. And then these little climbing pins here will will operate. Uh, get some view from this side over here. You see the cams rotate. You stop and go the other way. There's that advanced mechanism rotating again. Again, I'm not entirely sure, entirely sure what purpose in the operation of this this serves, but um, somebody's got to know, and of course I'll find out. Um, two of these have pretty new advanced motors. This one here still has the old yeah, advanced motor, um, the Lamb Electric Company, made in uh, Kent, Ohio.